Greetings. So I just did a live on this on Facebook, but as I have found Facebook to be very glitchy whenever I am doing videos. So I am repeating in many ways what I have posted on Facebook today about the 4th of July, which it is today where I am. So my goal today is to do an integration ceremony. There's a lot of talk about why we shouldn't be proud. In fact, this is a perspective that I used to carry. I used to be ashamed to be an American. And when I would travel, I would change my voice and I would act like I wasn't from here and pick up any you know, accent that I could to avoid being lumped in with the Americans. I used to think about the way in which our country is founded on top of natives and much bloodshed and I used to feel ashamed. And this was before doing my own shadow work. So I've had a change of heart over the years and this has come from doing shadow work, doing integration work and I wanted to share some of that today because I feel like as a collective we need to do this work. Part of the evolution of our species, individually and collectively, can only happen through integration. That means we look back at our past, and first we do this individually, but many people are doing both at once right now, this is what makes it a bit sticky right now, but first we look back into our past, our personal past. And sure, all of us have things we wish didn't happen, traumas or experiences or choices we made that we feel like are mistakes, maybe we hurt someone, maybe we did something really awful. Maybe something really awful happened to us. Maybe we wished we weren't programmed that way or a certain parent would have been there or something wouldn't have happened. But you know what? The past happened. It happened. You cannot go back and change it. You cannot go back and delete it. That is simply a fracturing further of the wholeness that you are that you want to get to the point of being a whole you, right? So in healing work and in integration work, we go back into our past and we find the purpose, the benefit for the trauma so that we can appreciate that we went through a certain thing so we could evolve, so we could wake up, so we could become empowered, so we could gain skills and remember authentic parts of ourselves that came from before we even came here, what we came with in our soul. So going back to our forefathers landing on the shores of the U.S. before it was the USA, And if we tune in to what, what was going on for them when that happened. And we'll do the other side too, but I think it's important to look at both. These were largely white men and women escaping a tyrannical system, a laws and rules that were preventing them from worshiping as they desired, from living freely that they were fleeing from, that they were escaping wishing to create something new. Now, this is a good lesson because if we flee something, if we try to run away from something, we often inadvertently end up creating the same thing in a way. So what they were escaping, a form of slavery, not being free, they ended up creating right at the beginning there. There was slavery and the native people, well, they were already free. So they were being attracted with their call of freedom to a place that already had a sense of freedom, a connectedness with spirit, the land, with the ancestors. And they didn't know that's what they were looking for. They didn't know the full extent of the evolutionary process they still needed to go through. Because if we look back, consciousness was not such 
in the white man then, they could easily have jumped into that harmony and communion with nature. And perhaps in another timeline that went differently. But it went the way it went. And so the only way we can move forward and go to a, a new, go to a new level as humans, and especially as Mer Americans in the United States of America to evolve our consciousness is to look back and to integrate all that which has come before us. So I want to light some sage because I love sage and because I want to honor the people who knew of this healing power of smudging the native people who by their ways have taught me and reintroduced me into communing with nature into recognizing the cycles and it has been my searching and my learning that has allowed me to integrate these parts of me because we are all part of one human race and each subset, I guess you could call it, has a different set of learning for a while, a different set of understanding for a while until we are big enough and mature enough to integrate all of that into us. So those of you who accuse me of appropriation, please, please understand that anything I do, I do with the greatest of honor and respect. And those I have sat with in the many traditions have gifted me and asked me to keep teaching, so I will. And so I, I smudge the American flag and I ask for a cleansing and a renewal and a blessing so that we might heal and integrate a past. But first I want to highlight some of the amazing things that this country has provided for us. Yeah, okay, so we, we have some downsides, all right? There was some, you know, wars and murders and atrocious things at the beginning, but there are also some beautiful things. There were also soul calls being answered and freedom bells being rung that these men and women wanted so badly to be free, to be able to worship how they wanted to speak how they wanted, to live how they wanted, and, and create a dream. And so I want to honor that part of them, knowing, yeah, it wasn't a complete, completely evolved on all sides, but there was vision there. Many of the words of our founding fathers are very inspiring and ring true to this day. And then I want to honor also black people, the African Americans who, at the beginning of that thing, were slaves to the white people. And what a difficult and shameful time that must have been for them. And that that too is in the human experience that I feel too. And I give great honor and I ask for a clearing and a blessing on those things that they can be made right. And of course, in the succession of awakening that this country continued to go in, with Abraham Lincoln, slavery was abolished as it should have been, as it rightly should have been much sooner at the beginning. And so all that has been made wrong, let our, our, our honoring of it, let our acknowledgement, okay, so we did this, this happened. And I'm going to honor that it is part of my past and know that those people were doing the best they could with the consciousness they had. Now you might argue me with that, but there's no way of going back and changing it now. We can only look at what is. But if we destroy it completely, then we also destroy all the beauty that has come forth from it. The art, the literature, the People who have followed their dreams and were able to become something they couldn't. Families all over the world flocked to America to live their dream. 
and America became the melting pot of all countries. And every time I would travel and meet Indians especially, they would say, oh, you're from America, a very good country. And many of them longed to come and live the American dream. So you see the freedoms that were instilled by the Constitution of the United States of America, they inspired the entire world. So it is time to take a look at the other parts of the creation of this country and to honor them also in making us strong, having to go through the hardships. I mean, geez, when I even think about the Native people being bowled over and then placed in reservations to reserve, to quiet, to reserve, though, the sacred wisdom that we were not yet ready for. We weren't ready. We were immature spiritually as a people, as a white people. And even as the freedoms came to the black, to the Asian, to all those who came, there was still a spiritual immaturity that the Native Americans had already when we got here. They had a spiritual maturity. They had an awareness of the connection between spirit and earth, the elements, the animals, and honoring of all of life that we weren't ready for. And so we came and we made our mark just like, you know, the ones that we meet when we're spiritually learning along our past that just seem to be like the animalistic friends. For me, it's my sister's husband who just, he's the alpha male and he doesn't know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about connecting to the land, when I'm talking about connecting and hearing the voices of wisdom, he still to this day is not ready for that conversation. And so the native voice was placed on reserve. Not that that was good. It just is what happened. So just like we can't cut out and throw away and discard parts of our past, we can only integrate to move forward into wholeness. So too with our country, we must integrate our past. We must forgive ourselves. We must forgive. We must acknowledge the benefits that come from the struggle. That together we all have made it to this place today because of all that past stuff. And now we have evolved enough, I think, I hope, that we are wise enough to now take all the pieces and put them together. Not crush them and demolish them because if we do not learn from them, if we do not see them, we will repeat them. And we are on the cusp of repeating some of that right now if we do not look back and learn to honor what brought us here, then we will find ourselves in slavery yet again. So my wish today is to look and see if we can place ourselves in the position of each of these members of our ancestry, the human ancestry, in the shoes of the white ones fleeing for religious freedom? When have you had to flee for freedom? A relationship, a job, some life situation where you felt stifled and you could not be, you had to flee somewhere. We've all had that, no matter where we're from. And so we can tune into that and we can say, yeah, that's in me too. And so I can honor that part of humanity that has had to flee for freedom. So I integrate that as part of me. And then there is the part of the human family that was enslaved as a part of that mission, as a workhorse, as working not out of his own volition, not being fully appreciated. So when, and I know, I know it's not the same. I know it's not the same as being literally in shackles and literally being whipped, though I know that's happened to many people. And 
ex-boyfriend of mine when he was four, he was a white man, when he was four years old, was strung up by his stepfather in the, girl, in the barn and whipped on a regular basis. Messed him up good. So there are many who've experienced this. And so I ask of us to look, where, when have I been treated badly? When have I been as a slave to a system, to a partner that wouldn't allow me to speak to a parent that was abusive? Where have I been undervalued? When have I been locked up? And notice where that is in your experience so that you can love that part about you and absorb it and assimilate it. And we must do this for our country. We must see that it's part of the story that brought us to this point that if we remove it, we might think, oh, that's great, let's go remove it. But you guys have seen the time travel movies. You can't just go delete a part and not affect everything. And you don't know how it's gonna go. It's a much smoother process right now to integrate and accelerate through alchemy rather than going down and breaking down a system. Now sure, you can get your house burned down and lose everything and go to start again, but you are left with a trauma, a wound that is not so easily walked away from. And you might not know it at first, but to desecrate and destroy an entire history and think you can just go and start there fresh right now there's a lot to unpack around that. And there would be a lot of people injured and disregarded in that process that would then have to be dealt with by the collective. It would still have to be dealt with. So instead, if we can integrate, if we can look at the natives, Imagine a time in your life where you had everything just the way you wanted it, that you were in connection. And now let me also say, of course, no people is without their own criminals, okay? There are spiritually connected holy men and women in all cultures, and there are the criminals too. Every race of people has their problem people, and their holy men, and their working class, and the people who are just really basically doing nothing, and their women folk, and their children. So let's not glorify one people over another. Sure, the natives also had the thieves. But largely, they were a spiritual people. They were connected. Imagine a time when you felt really connected, where then everything was taken from you. Everything was taken from you. Maybe even your family murdered. This has happened to people. I've lost everything in my life multiple times in very traumatic situations. So, yes, I'm not them, but I can relate in part. And I think you can too. And so collectively, in the human evolutionary process, collectively, we must integrate this as a stepping stone in our evolution. We learned, we learned, yeah, what we maybe should never do again we learned and we learn by integrating by seeing how yes that has brought us to now to a now new turning point and so I want to honor all those people I want to honor the blacks the natives and the white and all those who came to this melting pot looking for a dream because really everyone everyone just wants to be free to be themselves, to worship Almighty God or the winds and the trees, to speak, to dance, to play. And quite honestly, those freedoms are being jeopardized in this country right now because there isn't enough appreciation for the past, appreciation and wisdom and integration of what we have been through so that we might alchemize and go to the next level. And that is my invitation for all of us on this day, that we might integrate what has come before us and truly appreciate what we have, the freedoms we have, so that we do not risk falling back into 
a slave situation where we are all enslaved by a system where we have to continually not have our freedoms for whatever reason, whatever the reason, the only reason we would have to do it is because we forgot, we forgot to honor the freedoms we had. So I call for an integration time, an honoring of all that have come before us. I mentioned this in my other video, so I don't know if you saw that one, but I lived in Portland, Oregon a very long time. I was born and raised there. And then I was away and then I moved back and I spent more than another decade there. It's very much a home to me. One thing I do know about Portland, the natives, from the native perspective, is it is a swamp ground, a burial ground, a tainted burial ground. They would call it a swamp and the natives would not go into Portland because of the demonic energy that was there. It was not a holy place. It was riddled with half passage souls. And it's a portal. And it's a drain also. It's a place we can drain out some of this energy. And I know it's a big shadow work zone. That's where I did much of my shadow work. And so I ask for a healing and a clearing and a blessing on Portland in particular, as these energies, as we integrate them, that we might have a sloughing off zone, that we might clear through Portland, Oregon, that Portland, Oregon might receive the sanctification for all that they sit upon, the skulls of those who came before. And that is true with many grounds in this nation. Many are burial grounds, carry the remnants of the past. And we are asked today to honor their memory, to honor their wisdom. And all of those, our founding fathers included, that in their skull, that is in the earth beneath our feet. There are wisdoms that were acquired during their journey, through their experiences and hardships, the battles, the loves, that we could do well to integrate into our own minds so that we do not repeat certain things. And so I honor the ancestors of all the races of the human race. And I also acknowledge that the human race is not the only race in existence. Sometimes the earth beings are quite egotistical in this way and we think just because we don't see them, there's not other races, but there are. We're certainly not alone in this universe. And so with that knowing, I ask for a blessing on the human race and I also acknowledge there are many other races and much more wisdom many more things to integrate beyond us now and i ask today that we each might be liberated in what our limiting perspectives are about where we are what's going on here we might honor the past of not only our forefathers but also the native people and bring all this wisdom together so that we might elevate our experience that we might evolve our consciousness and then we might appreciate the freedom that we have while we have it, so we do not lose it. That we might add unto it wisdom even more divine. And so on this day, I celebrate the independence that I have experienced in my life, the freedoms that I've experienced in my life, that I hope you have, and also the integration possibility of all that has gone before. The things that were before not seen and not honored, I want to honor them, each and every soul. We all stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, good and bad, generation after generation of all races. We are intermingled, we breathe each other's breath. Like it or not, we're constantly exchanging breath. No matter where we are, there's only one breath in this world. So let us honor it. Let us cherish one another. 
and the story that has brought us to this point so that we might evolve it and not relive the wounds of the past. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for joining me to the ancestors of all the tribes. Thank you for being human with me. Let us go forward in peace. And so it is.